Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel Peterisms where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I have learned as I have grown into the person that I am today. And I don't have a bunch of meditation books with me today. I'm actually going to read um, from one of the passages in this book, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff and It's All Small Stuff, which is by Richard Carlson, PhD. Um, I've been reading like a passage a day in here to just kind of help me focus and maybe learn something um, to apply to my life, you know. Not everything in a grand spectrum, but maybe just little lessons throughout the day that I can apply. And um, if you remember, I think it was a year and a half ago or so, I said I was going to read a passage a day out of this and talk about it on my channel, and that never ended up happening. I think there's like a hundred, let me see, there are um, 200, and oh, there's a hundred, exactly a hundred passages in here. And this was my mom's book, um, which my Aunt Kathy gave to her in October of 1997. You can see it was inscri or inscribed in here. And my mom has certain of them um, like penciled in and she's underlined stuff. And you can see like in the, she's, let's see what this one is. Just for fun, agree with criticism directed toward you. Then watch it go away. And that's not the one that I was gonna read for today. The one that I was gonna read today is, I think it's called Imagine That Everyone Around You Is Enlightened Except For You. Hold on a second, let me see if I can find it. Um, uh, where is this? I just read it not too long ago. Imagine that everyone is enlightened except for you. Page 31. This one really like stood out to me, not to mention that my mom, if you can see up here, she like penciled in this and she even said up here at the top, she said, or as Peter said to me on January 8th of 1998, um, mom, what are you supposed to learn from this? Cause that's something that I learned early in my recovery was that um, things that are presented to us, we can find lessons in. And, and I have to say, you know, for much of my life in recovery, I was a believer that um, we could find lessons in everything that happened to us. And I'm not necessarily sure I believe that today. I believe that we can find grace in things and we can find patience in things and we can find understanding. And maybe there are lessons to be learned in how we move through things. But I don't know that everything that happens to us in life is attached to a lesson. I just don't. And um, so I wanted to read this to you today because I think that this is uh, a marvelous uh, passage. Imagine that everyone is enlightened except you. This strategy gives you a chance to practice something that is probably completely unacceptable to you. However, if you give it a try, you might find that it's one of the most helpful exercises in self-improvement. As the title suggests, the idea is to imagine that everyone you know and everyone you meet is perfectly enlightened. That is, everyone except you. The, peop the people you meet are all here to teach you something. Per perhaps the obnoxious driver or disrespectful teacher is here to teach you about patience. The punk rocker might be here to teach you to be less judgmental. Your job is to try to determine what the people in your life are trying to teach you. You'll find that if you do this, You'll be far less annoyed, bothered, and frustrated by the actions and imperfections of other people. You can actually get yourself in the habit of approaching life in this manner, and if you do, you'll be glad you did. Often, once you discover what someone is trying to teach you, it's easy to let go of your frustration. For example, suppose you're in the post office and the postal clerk uh, appears to be unintention unintentionally moving slowly. Rather than feeling frustrated, ask yourself the question, what is he trying to teach me? Maybe you need to learn about compassion, how hard it would be to have a job that you don't like. Or perhaps you could learn a little more about being patient. Standing in line is an excellent opportunity to break your habit of feeling impatient. You may be surprised at how fun and easy this is. All you're really doing is changing your perception from why are they doing this to what are they trying to teach me? Take a look around today at all the enlightened people. And I really, really like this because, first of all, I think that it um, allows us to look at the world in a more compassionate way. You know, when you stop looking at what is the world doing to me and you start looking at what can I learn from this situation. And, and like what I was saying before, when I was saying there's not like a direct lesson to be attached to that, what I meant by that was that in my life previous to let's say five years ago, you know, um, I would look at a situation and I would say, 
um, wow, what am I supposed to be learning from this? Like, I really truly believe that there was some direct lesson that was tied to that, you know, situation that was going on in my life, whether it was a breakup or, you know, an argument with a friend or something that had happened. And it was actually a conversation that I had with my friend Tanya like four or five years ago. She's like, I just don't believe that. She's like, I just don't believe that, you know, everything in life happens for a reason. She was like, I think there are reasons that we can find why things happen or there's lessons that we can learn from situations or it can help us to be kinder, gentler, more compassionate people. And so it really made me start looking at things in a different way. But, you know, I think when we look at that situation and, um, you know, I was talking about this in a vlog recently. It's like I've had all of these doctor's appointments that I've had to go to recently, right? And um, when I get there, it's like the people always seem very overwhelmed um, with, you know, all of the, the people that are coming in to get blood work done or whatnot or if it's for imagery or whatever. And they seem very overwhelmed because, the, you know, they, it's one person after another and um, – especially the way that things are set up now where they can only have like one person in the waiting area and one person, you know, all that. And it's like, I have seen people, um, and I, I'm not saying I'm a perfect example because there are times, you know, that um, I just am in the past have not been the nicest person in these situations, but I have really noticed how these people in the service industry are, well, in the health professional service industry are treated. And, you know, I think like they're there to help us and so it's really made me look at it in a completely different way. It's like it's taught me to have compassion for people and um, and to look at it in a completely different way. And what can I learn from them, you know? Because I, I've encountered so many people that just go about their business with a smile on their face and, you know, patience and compassion in their heart. And even though somebody's yelling at them, you know, because they didn't bring the right paperwork in <laughs> and so they can't do the blood work or whatnot. It's like, this isn't, my, it's not my fault that you didn't prepare for your own. You know, it's like I've encountered situations like that. It's like they just have a smile on their face and they're like, you know, I'm sorry. You know, we can reschedule you. We can get you in as soon as possible. And these people continue to yell and scream and, you know, whatever. And they're like, I'm sorry. You know, we can reschedule you, you know, and we can make sure that you have the paperwork next time. And it's like, wow, like to act that way in a situation, like to be yelled at all day long. And, and it's not just in, you know, the health, you know, professions, uh, uh, community. I think it's in many, many areas. You know, I think food services is another area that people are just screamed and yelled at on a regular basis. It's like my dad when I was growing up, he was like, "Don't you know? Sh don't uh, yell at the the waiter or waitress because you don't like your food," kind of thing. You know. And so it's really taught me to have a lot of compassion for the people um, that I interact with on a daily basis. You know, whether it's my neighbor or whether it's you know somebody on a the phone call or whatnot and um you know one day i was trying to schedule something speaking of a doctor's appointment again and i kept on getting shuffled around you know from like person to person to person till the point where i got back to the, <laughs> the original person i mean this is like six or seven shuffles over the period of like an hour right and I was so frustrated and the woman was so nice to me on the phone and she said, I don't know how you got back here. She said, but I will make sure that you get where you need to get. And she's like, and if you can't, then just call back, push this number and then I will take care of it. And she was, it just was unbelievable, you know? And I thought, I got off that call and everything was fine. It was just whatever, it got taken care of. And I thought, you know, to have to deal with people screaming and yelling at you all day long and I don't know. And the other thing it taught me was if I can be one less person that's screaming and yelling at people, you know, then maybe that's something that I can do on a daily basis just to help somebody else out. I don't know. But I think it's an, an interesting idea that every person you encounter throughout the day is more enlightened than you are. They're teaching you something, you know, and if, if you're open to the lesson, if you're open to saying to yourself, okay, maybe there's no direct lesson <laughs> related to why I'm in line with six people at the gas station, you know, if it's not that, maybe it's like, what can I learn from this, you know? Maybe it's that that person, you know, that is checking everybody out at the gas station is doing so with a, you know, hey, how's your day? And, you know, have a good evening and whatever, and a smile on their face. And if they can do it, then can't I as well? So, you know, there are lessons to be learned everywhere, I think, as long as we're open to those. And I really, really like that passage. So anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.